OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So welcome. We are, we are cheerleaders for AI, and we believe it saves us time, and it's going to rock our world. My name is Susan Gare. I'm from OTAN. I'm a subject matter expert, if I can say. And thank you for coming. Oh, I'm Debbie Benson. This has been a remarkable journey as we've learned more about AI and what's been happening, as particularly since November. And so we wanted to share what we learned with you and so that you can get excited too. I'm a retired ABE teacher, but I love OTAN and I'm still there, so. Um, hi, I'm Christy Reyes. I'm a subject matter expert with OTAN and an ESL teacher. Well, thank you. Gosh. <laughs> um, and I'm an ESL teacher with Miracosta College. I just finished my 25th year. I know. I'm still walking. I retirement is ways off, unfortunately. Um, but I um you probably started seeing right after the first of the year, if you read news at all, this like, oh, chat GPT, it's it's a oh my god, oh my god, are cheating, plagiarizing. But the way we view it is like, oh my gosh, this is this the same thing people, you know, people, you know, thought of when uh, students started using their cell phones in class. And my great mentor here is like, students are gonna use them anyway. So how can we, how can we wrap our arms around this and, and make it part of what we do? It's like using calculators in math. You know how yeah. long that took? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Probably without even knowing it, you, you probably have AI in your life already. Have you ever been using your email and you start typing something and it kind of predicts what you're, that is AI. If you have an iPhone that you scan your face to enter, that is AI. We are surrounded by AI and more, you know, there is this list and then the resources that we'll share of I get this email, we've just added 83 more AI tools this week. It's exploding. So we're just going to talk about a couple, okay? Just a couple today, just to get to whet your appetite. And we're gonna let you know right now that we love it. Uh. <laughs> so we hope to convert you. The AI cheerleaders. Yes. Yes. So I think this is- Okay, so this is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna look at chat GPT-3 and we're gonna show you how wonderful it is for you and your students. We're gonna look at Dolly 2. Do you guys know about Dolly 2? I We're gonna look at that because that is a, we don't have to worry about copyright. It's open source and it makes pictures. They're not always the perfect pictures, but it gets better. AI gets better the more we use it. Mm -hmm. Can I? Yes, at the top that one. You can actually minimize this one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, and then we're gonna have some comments and questions. So that's what we're planning to do today is the next slide. So I think that you, that's me, okay. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so this is the official definition, okay? Chat GPT is an AI artificial intelligence text generator tool that can answer questions, write content and develop conversations and dialogue. It is a natural language tool to respond to and choose your prompts. That was not friendly. I go, I don't know what that means. Make so, sure you talk to the computer because the, they, they can't hear you. Yeah. You. Okay. <laughs> you. Okay. All right. This is um, what I was able to glean. It's certainly making a big splash. Quote, chat GPT is scary good. We're not far from dangerously strong AI, says Elon Musk, who was one of the founders of open AI before leaving. Um, also adding that this is the fastest growing, um, what do we call it? Technology. Cool. 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 And they were able to get more than a million users in the first five days. So it's explosive. And the thing is, is it's human like conversations. So you can type something in, it'll respond, it responds, it responds, it responds, and you can keep going. So it's very, very cool. All right. Okay. 
Yeah, and one thing I would add, it's, it's not Google. So you know when you search Google, I'm almost starting to hate Google. <laughs> Yeah, you search and what are the first results for about a page of scrolling ads, right? And, you know, so you're, you're clicking, finally find something that might be useful. You have to click on it. You have to read it. You have to synthesize that. Is that quite what, it, let me check the next one. Whereas chat GPT, it's not, it's not searching Google for you. It's not, it's not using an algorithm to grab things from the internet. It has been fed data, not just from the internet, but from, you know, it does translations different languages even. So some data was fed to it by people and machines, not just from the internet, but all kinds of sources. We're gonna see the limitations in a moment. If you search for something on chat GPT that happened yesterday, no, no, because there was a cutoff. But That's since mm -hmm, the cutoff is now Google is coming out with BARD, if you've heard that, which will be integrated with ChatGPT and Bing, of course, uh, Microsoft has poured millions, well, I don't know, maybe even billions of dollars into it. And now with Bing, maybe you saw, there was a reporter about two weeks ago, you saw that um, in the news, that he was playing with Bing and he said this was the most disturbing thing, how Bing was like being flirtatious and things like that. But it is fed by human cont uh, content, right? So we, as it's artificial intelligence, so we, when we don't get the response we want, it learns from us. So that's why you need to keep working with it. And the important thing is asking the right prompts. Just like with Google, you know, you, you don't put in the right search and you don't quite get what you're looking for. You regenerate the content with the right prompts and that's called prompt engineering. So how do you even get there? Well. Everybody's like, what is this? Is this, a, is this an app? No, it's a website. You just go to ChatGPT. We have the link here. And you, I just created an account with my Google, you know, link it with my Google account. Some people are worried about privacy. I, you know, come and arrest me if you want to. But, um, there, you know, it, you can link it with your Google account or you can create an account with a, an email. And then you just go in and you ask it a question and it will give you some responses. You don't get quite what you want. You don't start a new query. You just ask it, can you please modify that to tell me this? Very simple to use, free, but because it's got so many people really anxiously and excitedly interested in it, sometimes when you go on, you can't get in immediately. So they just came out with a $20 a month subscription. I would never pay for that. I haven't had any problem. What, what, have you? No. Had any I mean, maybe once at a very high volume time, I tried to get in and it gave me like about a minute. It said our servers are very busy right now or something. And I was able to get in pretty quickly. I've written some mm -hmm. comprehension, reading comprehension pieces using it. Yes. And I found that if I, if I say 25 questions, Give me a 25 question reading comprehension quiz on the rocking horse winner. It'll do fine. But if you say 50 questions, it it cycles and then it times out and it just kind of works. Because you're asking for too much information. Yeah. So this was um a prompt that we put into chat GPT and the prompt was describe a principle that you apply to your life, explain what this principle means to you and how you have applied it to your life. And this was actually a prompt that I had for my students in Afghanistan that they were going to write a paragraph about this. And so I put it in because I wanted to see what the output would be. And this is what I got. And this is key for the whole thing that teachers worry about cheating. This is not a human being. This is a chat box. This is AI, and it'll always tell you, I don't have personal experience. So what your students need to do in their essays is include personal experiences, and you will never have to worry about them cheating with AI, because it says right here, I don't have personal experiences or emotions, but I'll describe a principle that could be applied to one's life. 
If you get a paragraph like this, you'll know it's chat GPT because there's, so you got to get your students changing the way they write. They need to put in their personal experience. They need to put in their emotion. They need to put in their feelings. And then they, you will, they can, you know what? I use chat GPT. I use it to help frame me, not what I want to say. I don't think that's cheating. Maybe some of you do, I don't know, but I don't. <laughs> And so then I take the frame and I can put in my own personal experiences. I can put my own emotions in there. And I have a piece of writing that's pretty darn good. It's a lot easier than starting to, from scratch where you don't even know where to go from. So that this is the one thing I want to show you. This cannot do that, okay? It will never be able to do emotion or personal experience. So as long as you ask your students to input that into their writing, you won't have any cheating problem. Yes. It will correct your grammar yeah. for you if you ask it. Yeah. You can even put in your own right and ask you ask the AI how did I write this, and it will give you feedback on your writing. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty darn good feedback. You can also ask you to write in the APA or in our so that's this this is the thing that when I did that and I saw that it said that to me, that I don't have that. I said that's it. I'm just gonna have my students make sure they put always have to have a personal experience, mm -hmm. always have to have a, a sense of it. And have them include class discussions. Yeah to reference class discussions would be another way. There are a few, and um, Debbie's gonna be talking specifically to using it for writing, but there, there are a few, um, I think some of you might know Quill. Um, it's a great website for students to practice grammar and things. Quill, along with another organization, created a chat GPT checker um, because at first turnitin.com said they couldn't check for it, but now even turnitin.com said they can. And then a college student who's a programmer, he created a tool, but you want to be really cautious, right? What, you know, what if you did run it through, students turn in a piece of writing, you run it through one of these chat GPT checkers, and it pops up saying that it's plagiarized. Or AI, it would say yeah. AI written by AI. AI. Well, I mean, and you went and accused a student of that. And it's not true. And it's not true, right? So that's why we really need to rethink how we teach writing. We're really going to have to do that. And I, I also put in my students' writing, I put it in, I, I put it into four different AI checkers. And randomly they said it's AI, it's not AI. It's AI, it's not AI. So that's not really a good way to do it. I think you're underestimating our students and our students need to know how to use AI. Yes, um, I just saw an article about, go ahead. I haven't seen that happen. I mean, I don't know, it's so new. I haven't seen it happen yet, but um, I'm even careful with turn it in because I don't trust turn it in 100% either. So I look at the turn it in. If you click on it, it'll show you what sentences they think are copied. And then I just check that. Is that really copied or is it just, you know, student rephrasing something? So on your chat, they can't hear the question. Oh, they can't hear the questions. Okay. So we'll just have to repeat the question. Yeah. We'll repeat, okay, the, we'll question. repeat the question. Sorry. So um, what was the question? Um, it's really my own original writing. Does it then become a published song? Yeah. So does turnitin.com take your own writing and turn it into a published something? But I don't know the answer. So, yeah. Does anybody here teach the higher level writing that you use turnitin.com? Well, I use turnitin.com, but. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This one person was doing it in my doctor. I had a um, paper for a week in class, had a submission in the same class, and it was a paper as a basis. And then it was my paper, and it came back later. Oh, it was good. Later, I found out. So it was a paper. Okay. Yeah, but it was a brain. No, it was a 
so we are having a discussion about turnitin.com. Turnitin.com, we're told, will tell you that you've plagiarized yourself. Okay, so let's just go back and get out of the turn in thing. <laughs> we go back to how we can use AI. And so I have we've generated a whole bunch of ideas of ways that we could use AI. Number one is you can generate conversation questions for students and have the students answer the questions and AI will respond. So you have a natural conversation partner. You can generate dialogues with target grammar and vocabulary and situations relevant to your students' lives. It is an incredible tool for speaking problems. For writing and grammar, you can teach students about different registers. You can teach them summarization and paraphrasing, and you can generate model paragraphs and essays for your students. And I wanna say something about the summarization and paraphrasing. I teach my students, and I'm working with students in Afghanistan. I teach them to use Jack, Jack GPT, but to cite it, that they used it. And that way I know that they're using some form of chat GPT. And I think if we just teach them how to cite it, that would be better than, than mm -hmm. saying don't use something that they're going to use. So are, are you suggesting that they use chat GPT the same way they would use like Wikipedia? Sure. Why not? I mean, they're going to use it. Okay. So you might as well come to terms with we have to change the way we teach. Well, if you ask chat GPT how to cite it, it will yeah. tell you. They will give you the format mm -hmm. to put it in your paper. Okay, vocabulary. You got your students with a vocabulary list. They can put that list in chat, chat GPT and it will generate a whole uh, bunch of sentences for the vocabulary that your students need to know. So you can have them write, have G, chat GPT write sentences with the vocabulary that you've taught them. I think that's a fantastic tool for students to see the way vocabulary is used in practice. Yeah, but then how do you distinguish? Like, uh, if I if I see the students, okay, that are on Zoom, we're going to. I want everybody to come up with an idiom. I can tell that half of them have just googled what's a common idiom because they come up with the same ones. Half of them come up with like I can tell if their original thoughts or something that's in their head, and then half of them. How do you how do you have them speak with? I would rephrase the way I have them do that activity and perhaps give them a context for the idiom and make them work look at idioms from a certain context so that it's not, not just wide open. I think if you give more parameters, you'd have better work there. Okay, materials development. You already heard the gentleman in the back there does a reading comprehension questions. You can put in a reading and it will generate all the questions for you plus the answers. So you don't have to do that. That's saving you time as a teacher, right? And the last one is instruction. It will give you a good ideas for ways to approach a topic that you wouldn't think about approaching. It's an amazing tool for teachers. I put in like a whole bunch of stuff. Like I was doing this, it was called language and thinking class. And I had to uh, compare Martin Luther King Birmingham speech with somebody else. That I can't remember. I had no idea relationship went together. So I put it into chat GPT. It gave me the framework for the relationship. And then I put my own experience and say, okay, Mark Mr. King said, and in my experience, blah, blah, blah. And I have a great but it, you know, it saved me a lot of time. So it's even good for instruction. Yeah. And I think I just want to go back to one thing is um I think you mentioned something about having students get answers to questions they have. Is it like Wikipedia? Well, they should not just trust chat GPT. Yeah. It lies. Yeah. It does lie sometimes. It's not 100% accurate. Or it's misinformed. It's misinformed because it's been fed human data and we're misinformed sometimes. So we'll talk again. We're it gonna, has a lot of biases. It does have a lot of biases. A lot of the AI does. Um, so, um, you know, one thing I did and I've seen um, in different uh, groups that I'm listservs and things, it will write a lesson plan. It will write a rubric. I mean, it's going to save us a lot of time. So these are really teacher uses, first of all. How we're going to use it, have students use it, that's that's kind of not really been widely talked about as much. But it saves us tons of time by um, these some of these uses. So we're going to talk about it. Yeah, we will talk about it. Um, like for vocabulary, um, 
I don't know if any of you teach sort of, uh, the academic word list. And there's a website that I, I like to use. It's called the Academic Word List Highlighter. And I would copy in some text. This will do that for you too. You just put in a text and you ask it to separate out the academic word list words with definitions, with sample sentences. There's my vocabulary lesson. Because I'm always having to think, oh, what, what's a sample sentence that I can you know, help students you know, as a frame for them to use about themselves? It's going to save us just a whole bunch of time, really, really. Um, you know, I, I think textbook writers, this is one, um, are a little bit nervous because sometimes there is a content that I want to teach, but I'm not finding the textbook. I'm, I'm finding something online, but it's not at the level written for my English language learners. I can copy and paste it in there from the internet and ask it to write it in a simpler language form. And Susan mentioned register. How many times do our students, you know, send us an email? It's like, mm, you know, that that's not quite how you should be addressing an instructor. And so going to student uses would be really um, having students use it to learn how to express themselves more formally and academically. Okay, so again, student uses, shorter brainstorm, <laughs> not, not as many things happening because of the fear, but we shouldn't fear it. But um, if you do teach English language learners, for example, um, and I don't know, I, I don't know the occupations and life experiences of all my learners, but occasionally they tell me I need to go to talk to X. I need to talk to my kid's teacher about this problem. I need to talk to my boss about this coworker. I don't know how to say it. Sometimes I don't know how to say it. Okay. I don't, I don't know all of their workplaces. We can help students learn how to use it by putting in a prompt, write a conversation for me um, in formal language, asking my boss to change my work schedule. And it will create a conversation for them. Okay, a dialogue. Um, so generating dialogues for all kinds of difficult conversations, whether it's a job interview. I know those common job interview questions, but they may have changed from the last time I learned about all of that. So, and maybe my student is applying for a job as a mechanical engineer. How can I know the questions for that? I, I have no knowledge in that field. Students could go there and um, ask chat GPT to generate a list of, con of inter job interview questions for a mechanical engineer, and it will come up with questions for them specific to their career area or their job. So that's one, okay? Um, another way that we can um, start to help students use this tool is just to generate ideas. So I'm sure you do this as part of the writing process or when you're having students do a project where you have them work together to generate ideas. And sometimes it can come out really fantastically. And other times you're just like, do I have to tell you the ideas? Because they're not going anywhere. This could be another tool to help them further their brainstorm list of generating ideas, whether it's for a writing assignment or a project, for example. Um, next we have, well, writing and grammar. How many of you do teach writing? Oh my gosh, do you spend, you know, at the lower levels, it's a little bit like if you're teaching beginning ESL, it's very formulaic. My name is fill in the blank, copy it, right? But once we get to the higher levels um, of writing, whether that's paragraph or essay, that's hours of work, isn't it? First, you're giving feedback on content. And then again, feedback on content, and then taking that revision. I was in a session earlier today where someone said their student revised something nine times. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, my classes are only eight weeks long. <laughs> what the hell? We can cut out the middleman just a little bit, not but a little bit, where students paste in a paragraph they've written and ask first, you know, going with the writing process, content first, how can I make this better? Okay. Then secondarily, what grammar errors do I have in this? What punctuation errors? But not, it's not just going to correct. We, the, we can train students to ask ChatGPT to locate the errors and explain. Now, does this mean our jobs are going to be obsolete? I hope not. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Because of the human element, 
students still need to be taught how to write. They still need to be taught how to write. Can you show? Yeah, we'll try to get to that. Yeah. Um, I we were worried that if we tried to get you all on chat GPT, that you would get that I know. <laughs> message that, oh, come back later because um, too many people are using, but we'll try to get to that at the end, yes. Um, what else do we have? Um, a writing and grammar I talked about. Um, do you use rubrics when you teach writing? Mm -hmm. So here's something that Debbie's going to be talking about, but um, you know, the blank page can be so intimidating and students need models. Do we have time to write models? Maybe you have some tried and true writing lessons where you have those model you know, pieces of writing, but that's not always realistic. Well, what we can do in the beginning stages of teaching writing is to ask students, put in a prompt and see what you come up with. Now compare ChatGPT's prompt with this rubric and how would you improve ChatGPT's work? So they're really starting to think about critically about what is good writing, okay? Um, let me see, what else do we have here for writing and vocabulary? You know, um, sometimes students, I assign them to do some work with vocabulary and they're having to look at multiple websites. Like they go to a dictionary to get the definition. They go to thesaurus.com. Um, sometimes if it's idioms, I like them to look up the etymology. Where, where did this come from? You know, um, the story behind it. They don't have to go to multiple websites. They can get it all in one place. Okay, with sample sentences, as we were talked about. It does translations pretty well. I saw um, a gentleman who teaches English in Japan. He has a very long YouTube video talking about this. And he put in all kinds of asking it for translations and it came out really well. He said in Japanese, um, my husband is a, a native English speaker and I had him check, our Spanish speaker, I'm sorry. And so I put in, please explain something like an idiom, raining cats and dogs in Spanish and give me an example. And it did it very well, even in Spanish. Now, you know, I, I tell students that teaching English language learning, you need to kind of like back off from just translating, but there's a translation tool that not just gives a word for word translation, gives, gives it in a context with examples, okay? A um, Couple more things here. Generate sentences. You know, when I'm teaching vocabulary, I always, the research shows the students can use the vocabulary to, in speaking and writing about themselves, they will retain those new words better. So I always, the beginning at least, give them a sentence frame because they're not short, but then I back off, but they could use that as a resource to come up with some sentences about themselves or to write a story with some new, newly learned vocabulary. And learn, learning in general, I mean, you've probably seen through the pandemic when we went to online instruction, we, we kind of brought in new students into our programs who work all the time or have no childcare. And so they can study online, right? So this is their little study buddy, ChatGPT. It can be a conversation, written conversation um, buddy. It can be a tutor for them, a language partner. And um, often in class, we do this activity, think, pair, share, okay? Um, what I've seen some recommend is think, pair. Now let's check chat GPT. Let's pair again and then share. It can be sort of like um, something to give the, expand their ideas out. And if they're, if they're not coming up with ample ideas for whatever the conversation topic is. So those are just some things. I mean, this is going to be exploding for students. I think, I don't know. Do your students know about this tool? Very few, very few, right? So um, go ahead, Marcy. I saw an idea where mm -hmm. you put like compare and contrast like a Coke and Pepsi. Yeah. And then create in a five paragraph essay or something. And then basically it's kind of this flipped mindset with chat GTP. GPT. It's hard to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, where it, then you have the student create the graphic organizer, fill in the graphic organizer from the writing. Yeah. So usually we have them do the, the, the graphic organizer and then we don't write it, but you have them. So you know you're using it, they're using it. So then have them use it and deconstruct it in a different way. I don't know if everybody on Zoom heard that, 
Um, Marcy said she saw um, an idea of using chat GPT to generate the writing content and then go back and deconstruct from that to, to kind of analyze, giving students the analytical skills to right. see how things are organized and put together. Is that kind of? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, Debbie. Oh, okay. So how do you start? Remember to talk to the this? Yeah. This. <laughs> but not too close because then the picture's done. All right. You're going to have to talk in other groups of students. Because if you don't, some know, some don't, some don't, and there's going to be an element of that kind of stuff. So just include it. You've got a syllabus, include it. Discuss it. Have the students express in their own words the benefits and risks. Um, Co construct. The norms for use. How do they think it ought to be used? How do they think that it might be beneficial? Um, and then there's going to be things that are not negotiable for you. Make those clear. Have very clear expectations. If they've used chat GPT, they need to all decide. Okay. Something like that, whatever it is. But and then give them examples so they're very clear on it. Um, this is a time of a paradigm shift where what was before and what is after, if we do not prepare them, then what have we done? If everyone else in the workplace is using it and every place, every other place, but yet we're not going to, it's like at my high, at my school, and thank goodness you don't know where it is because we don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you have on this door, you must not use your cell phone. Must not use your calculator. Hmm. You must not use chat. No, we need to keep them up. and how to make it a tool for them. Because think about it: doesn't everybody need a tutor? And wouldn't it be nice that everybody can get the the, the, the explanations that they need and the help they need, and then we can have guide them utilizing it so they still learn how to teach, how to to learn and how to use it. Okay. You on the next slide? Here we go. All right. I'm an ABE teacher. And the reason I got this job today was because these two were so excited for all the ESL things that you can do with it. And how many Because, of course, your friends are and they're students for cheating. They're third. And then next fear is well, are they going to learn how to write? And then we know that GP, chat GPT has biases because the data that was put in had biases. And so are we just generating that and being to it or even false information, okay? But now let's look at the benefits. We can include the students in the assessment process. They can be part of the learning of what they're supposed to be learning. That they recognize it, that they, they can put it into chat GPT and then they can um, evaluate it and the rubric idea. Um, we can also change our teaching practices. There was a time not that long ago where we used to have a peer review, where we used primary sources. Chat GPT doesn't have that yet. <laughs> so we can do that. We can go back to teaching the Socratic problem. So we can we can think through how we can teach in a different way. Um, we can recognize and train AI to reject inappropriate requests. That'll be a time that it will take a little time. But for me, this was the most important one. When my students leave my classroom, I want them prepared for the world out there. And if I haven't prepared them, then I didn't do my job. And ChatGPT is with us. And it's been with us. How many of you use Grammarly? Is that cheating? Depends on who's taking the class. Marla. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? It depends on who's taking the class. It depends on who's taking the class. And just one thing, you know, I don't know if anyone here, you're the uh, social media manager at your school for maybe your school has a Facebook, a, a, an Instagram account. That's a, That was a pretty new job, right? Well, there's going to be a new job for most companies where they're going to be the, the chat GPT uh, sort of generator. That's a new job. 
that our students will need to train for. So. How they can use it. Yeah. Okay. All right, this is from the Matt uh, Miller, right? Yeah, it's, it's that text, it's it's the text textbook. Yeah. And he posed some interesting questions. So I thought we should look at it. Okay, so this is student created at the bottom. This is bot created at the top. And which of these would you consider cheating? Which of these is relevant to our students' future? And which of these would you use in your work as an adult? Okay, so now you evaluate. Which of these would you accept and which would you? Student plugged prompt into AI, copied the response, and submitted it to the teacher. Okay, AI created a response. The student read it, edited it, adjusted it, and submitted it. Student created multiple AI responses, used the best parts, edited, and submitted. Student wrote the main idea, AI generated a draft, and offered feedback to improve. Student consulted the internet AI for ideas, then wrote and submitted. Or the student wrote all the assignment content without consulting AI or the internet. Good questions. That, that's, that's pretty reasonable. You can sit there and you can see places that you could fashion and maybe utilize getting chat GPT a part of the process. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Now on the left, you see the traditional writing process. We pre-write, we're gonna have research. It's at that point that we research after we figured out what our topic's gonna to be. We draft it, we revise it, and we edit and proofread it. That's the tradition. This was created by Glenn M. Kleiner. And this is, he uses a space framework and so it's, it's space is what it spells. So set the directions. Who's the audience? What's the idea that you're trying to, to, to use? What kinds of things do you want in it? Okay. Step two, prompt. This is the P. Create the prompt for the AI. Okay. Step three, assess the AI output. Step four, curate the AI generated text. Maybe you've had to go back and ask AI again. Modify it a little, change it a little, and you kind of take two and put it together. So you're curating, okay? Then the final one is to edit the combined human and the AI. That. Isn't this what we already do? <laughs> I mean, honestly, don't you look at Google and get some ideas and maybe change the words a bit and use that in your writing when you're writing about something that's unfamiliar? What makes me so excited about this is our traditional way of writing is already traditional. And we need to look at the future. Mm -hmm. And this is a beautiful process where critical thinking is involved. It's no more. There's more engagement. Yeah. Much more engagement in the process this way mm -hmm. than, um, well, I don't know. If you could do it either way, you're, you're still engaged. And it'd be, it's mm -hmm. faster. Yeah. It's faster, but you're going to also, my opinion, might get better writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you can and ask why we're that. Right? Yes, you have. Well, we have to give them models right. anyway, right? So. Mm -hmm. That thing happens between two and three. And it starts to lead the draft, and then it happens some more. Mm -hmm. And I'm not writing worried about my grammar and stuff like that. They're fixing it. Well, is that cheating? So. He said that editing, the process of editing, I'm, I'm, what I'm, he's writing a book. He's writing a book. The process of editing is that there is, the editors are doing the grammar checks and the punctuation check, right? You're not doing it. And that question is, is that cheating? But I've seen some books that have been edited and still have errors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. So they're doing that for you. Yeah. Good point. There's a lot more uh, considering the prompts and delving into the topic in step one and two because they have to become very adaptive and you know, learn what they want to know. Yeah. So we give them a prompt and they be glad and try to find some, you know, Google it and find some information on the web. Here they really have to refine their their own. And then we understand. Otherwise, what comes out garbage in, garbage out, right? We're really asking to spend that time up front, understanding what it is, 
they are looking for when they want to know. I think that it also helps with audience. Because a lot of my students, that wasn't something that they didn't understand that they're going to not talk to their boyfriend, they think they're going to be the boss. They could get that. But the new things, other things, no. They, they were able to. So you could see assignments. They would say, okay, now it's generated for this, or now it's generated for that. And so they can actually begin to see the differences of the boss. Well, or don't tell them, give them a scenario and say, bring me back to them. So we have some comments in the chat. Um, I've seen posts by people who asked it to pretend to be a person with certain characteristics and it made up experiences that it had. Yeah, and that's part of the prompt engineering is, uh, you know, you ask it to play the role of whatever person, and that's the kind of language that it will give you as well. So I've seen, you know, right, right. Um, write a text asking my boss in the form of Shakespeare. It will do that. Yeah. It says, um, another question we have is, does chat GPT speak Spanish? As I said, yeah, I think that the translations are very, very good. Um, you can actually talk to it in Spanish. Yeah. Um, let's see, what's the other content? Let's see what else. I think that's it. Oh, there was one more question or comment here about writing. Can I find it? Let's see. Sorry. Let me find it. Do, do, and do, do. online people, if you have a question or you want to make a statement, feel free. Um, what else? There was one more. There was people. one more. Um, you have to have clarity in your own writing before a copy editor will fix your errors. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah. stuff that I'm saying if I give them a topic, they're gonna get stuck in this rabbit hole that if it's like three of them totally miss all research. Yeah. Researching and all that right. But the thing for this would be like a good from start on the library research. Yeah. And like write them with the time, write them with like a cultural experience. Research needed dancing. Yeah, and they can they can actually say, tell me about a culture. Oh, excuse me, sir, in the back, because we have people online. When you're talking, they can't hear anything. That's mm -hmm. okay. Um, so I, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> but um oh yeah, cultural experience. It doesn't, it doesn't do personal cultural experience. So because it, it's not a human. And so there are things that the students are gonna have to supply in order to make it a good piece of writing. So yeah, we'll do that. That's great. Okay. Next slide. So before you go on, so that it only tells you what you know, and then it makes it so that it is consumable by somebody that you're turning it into. If you walk out in the field and you see an ignis rock and you don't know what that rock is, It'll never know what a rock is. You'll ask what kind of rock it is. So you're 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 making something presentable. This is this is more of a presentation to somebody or answering in your class vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Once they you give them the word, now they know it exists. People still don't know what they don't know, and AI can't fix that in this format. So how do we how do we get them to push past what they don't know to try to Say these are the things that are out there. Maybe I mean I'm I'm kind of trying to figure out. This is amazing for history, mm -hmm. sociology, medical facts, but it's not good for diagnosis, quite frankly, and it wouldn't be good for identification. So I'm curious where we fit that into. You're looking at me like instruction. I you. <laughs> that's where that's where we will never be obsolete because it cannot do some things that only we can do. <laughs> A few more years. <laughs> it can write code. It can yeah. exactly. Yes, it can explain what's wrong with your code if it's debugging. Jobs. If we do our jobs well, it is not going to take away our jobs. Yeah, we have to change because of what you said. Yeah, I mean, when you don't know what you don't know. You need someone to tell you what you don't know. Exactly. Yeah. 
effort and rest. And so the first three paragraphs were not true. And the fourth paragraph, he said, children. And he said, but that was pretty good, wasn't it? He said, he had asked to write it in the style of him when he put the name. He said, they probably won't have it, but they nailed it. <laughs> and then he discussed how he viewed this and the purpose and the change. Yes, there will be jobs lost. There's, it's inevitable. It happens every time in history when there is a shift. There will be job loss. We but Christy just, just pointed out that there'll be jobs gained. Yes, there will be jobs gained. Yes, correct. There will, and that's that's where we have to help our students go to bear. Okay. All right. So here's some workarounds. Okay. And again, some of them may appeal, and some of them you go, no, I don't want that. Okay. You could have students that are required to use in class materials. That GPT is not there, so they can't use it. Um, they have to revise the work in response to the instructor's feedback. Okay, so you read it, you tell them to change this or that. Okay. Cite all sources fully. I have a question. Yes. Can she just, if they were changed it to based on teacher's response, they can put change it is based Absolutely. on this. They can do that, right? Oh, okay. That GPT will do that. It will continue the conversation. Okay. Yes, it will. You can also put it in and have chat GPT. And it will save all your previous requests in chat GPT so it knows you. Mm -hmm. so you and it knows it. that you already asked that question and it will it's find it for you. Stay up at night when you're bored. You can assign a format that currently GPT is not good at. Oh, I guess. Right? Presentations, verbal presentations uh, with a QA to check for depth of understanding. Okay. Uh, you could use prompt, prompts that are focused on current information. Remember, this the information is often that was the data dump. Now they can put another data dump in, sure. But for right now, you could use something that happened yesterday on the news. Uh, or local. What's happening locally here? You could use prompts to deal with that. Um, and I liked this one because there are built-in biases because the information that was put in and bias. Play the game of fact fiction, bias and bias. Yeah. And have them use okay. the you know, and find the bias. Mm -hmm. okay. So I thought that was good. Yes. You were you were listening to your piece about this. As an administrator who spent a hundred years supervising and coaching teachers, I saw that there was a wide divide between the quality of questions that teachers mm -hmm. asked. Mm -hmm. This will force the teachers to revise their questions. Yeah, we do. When they get a quick yes. example of what their question will result with immediate feedback, not waiting for a whole class. Yeah, this, this requires something. Mm -hmm. that's, that's true. We're preparing them, but there will be changes. I saw a couple of things in the chat when people were talking about like, well, you can give them a personal experience prompts and then put that in. I would just kind of argue at that point, if you change the way we're providing the instruction and they have to go through all these crazy workarounds to get a final product that we can't distinguish from a regular person, then we succeed anyways. Yeah, because they figured out how to dupe us. <laughs> I like Marsha's content. Students who plagiarize. Are going to plagiarize. Yes. Yeah. We just have to tell them you're not going to learn by doing that. Don't you tell students that by copying, you're not learning, and that's not going to serve you well you later on. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Great point. So we're going to wrap up chat GPT, I think, now. And um, just remember, the results have biases, and um, these biases are quite easy to see. So um, you would, you would want to work with that on your students. The information is not current, absolutely not current, and may not be accurate. Students would know check for those things. As stated in the samples paragraph from ChatGPT, as a language model AI, I don't have personal experiences or emotions, but I'll describe a principle that could be applied to one's life. And that I think is the beauty of ChatGPT. It gives you a framework and you add your personal experience. I don't know if y'all saw on the news. Oh my gosh, this is this is a really a do not do. 
the school shooting at the University of Michigan? Did you see that their administration used chat GPT to create a letter of condolence? Okay. I'm not kidding. It was so really here's where it was, written there. it was well written. But don't we want to talk about the ethics there with our students? Yeah, I think that could be a great. It's about the kind of skills that are required to write your own stuff. Original, using your original idea, mining your own experience. Yes. Like formulating that there is a critical thinking skill set that I feel like is going to be lost, but it might just be lost in the same way that those math skills were lost when they came out with scientific calculators. Mm. It might just be something that the general population, because there are mathematicians who know how to do that math. Yeah, but I, I don't believe that it's lost. I mean, I don't believe that it's lost. I believe that we're using it in a different way. And, and maybe what's lost is not needed anymore. So, you know, it's just like, I don't know. I, my, I, I know kids learn their multiplication table, but they still use a calculator. You know, it's an age old discussion. And, and even the testing systems now allow people to use calculators because they need to be faster. They need to be better. Mm -hmm. And and this is so we're going to move on to the graphic part of AI, if you don't mind. Um, so this is Dolly 2. And I don't know if you know about Dolly 2. It's an image generator. Um, it will generate any image that you ask it. Um, it's open. You can use the images that are generated without citing them. Just say you got it from Dolly 2. And in case you're interested, the name honors surrealist artist Salvador Dali and the Pixar robot. So just to show you our images, um, we entered, um, show us a, an image from Wally in the style of Dali and show an image of Dali in the style of Pixar. So you can, this is the debate though, the Supreme Court, if you are following, they're coming up with a decision about artist rights. Do, do people, would I have the right to use some Van Gogh-esque type of artwork and put it my name on it and sell it? So it's it's quite debatable. We're going to talk about that. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore, right? After what, 1920? After 1920, copyright, right? But, okay. Can I even say mm -hmm. something real quick? Sure. What I love about these art generators is that when I'm looking for an image to uh, to demonstrate a concept to my students, I can go into an art generator and describe exactly the image that I'm looking for, and it'll generate something very close to what I need. I don't have to spend all that time searching the internet for that particular image because my my ESL students they relate to graphics yes. more than graphic images, much more than they relate to text. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and you finally find the, the image that you love and it's copyright, yeah. you know, like, yeah. yeah. So it, you can, you want an image. I saw one, uh, it's a chair in the shape and cover, color of an avocado. If you want to create that, it will make it yeah. for you, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's also an opportunity for an activity for the student to go in and make a description of something uh, that they want to see. Mm -hmm. So they're making pictures with their words or they're at they're mm -hmm. prompting pictures using their words. And I, I think that's very powerful. It is. Yeah. Just remember, pictures are, oh, this is my favorite one. Create and organize the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have a refrigerator? <laughs> yeah, currently all these it has to be by typing in the prompts. Yes, the verbal prompts. Right. You type in a, a word prompt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can also put, if you have the next yep. where I showed a picture. So you can also put a picture that you have or a picture that you take outside and it will generate images. This is my dog. This is the original right here. And then I asked it to generate different images, like my dog, and it will generate. <laughs> 
as I was using this the first time, I suddenly discovered how little that art I knew. Because I needed to know an artist like mm -hmm. somebody, oh, yeah. and also, and something about what their art looked like to know if I was going to even like it before I could ask the right question. Well, it doesn't have to be in the style of. It, you can just, yeah, yeah. yeah. One word, um, really quick, um, Christina. Some of the people images look really weird. L kind of like her dog's mouth right here. Uh huh. And if you're not specific, you're only gonna get white folks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's the bias. Okay. It's so the more questions you ask, the more questions you look for the more it's going to generate prompts that you want to see. So if we keep asking for different specific pictures, then it will learn to generate. Christine, you have a question. So I created a chat GPT quiz. Can I take a word problem and put it in Dolly and get the diagram that goes with it? Probably, maybe. I don't know. Try it. Let, Let us know. know. Here, just here. They'll be smiling. I, I, I can just see the math on the switch. Do you like math? Well, there's so much AI out there. There's probably a better tool for you, actually. Mm -hmm. I have a teacher, she's in Russia, but she's teaching um, aircraft, aircraft students about maintenance of aircraft. And she has pictures of aircraft, but they're copyrighted. But she puts the picture into Dali, and she gets a similar picture of an aircraft that she can use. Wow. Well, maybe that's where, where the Supreme Court is make, trying to make a decision. It's similar to music. Remember music? Well, Napster? Uh, Remember yeah. Napster? They figured out a solution, right? Artists now get paid for their music. Not very much. No. But endorsements. We have to flow along with it. We can't ignore it. I'm kind of an old person, and I'm I'm on the right of the sea. Yeah. I've I ha I've heard of that, but haven't checked it out yet. Um, e o m e. Yeah. So you just put text and it will create a slideshow for you. Create. And it created a slideshow for you. Tom, T O M E. It was something very formulaic. Very formulaic, you think. Why is it the most that you know? Asked to add example. Yeah. The struggle with that. Right? You could do chat GBT first, yeah. Um I I didn't like you know, I didn't like their languages. Oh yeah, they're you know. then you use Dali. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Oh well Christina. Okay. Um so how teachers can use it, Susan or Debbie? You can take part three and part history. Um, and who owns the images? The person who generates the image owns the images at this moment. Whether that will change with Supreme Court justices or whatever, I don't know. But um but it's not the, the art generator that owns the art. No. No, it's you. It's your you idea. Looked it up. You looked it up. It says the user who generates the image owns the image. Generated. So image. you don't decide it in your presentation. No. That's cool. Huh. Yeah. Uh, I spent but I do. I do. That's cool. Because I believe in So, so there we go. How many times are your students creating a presentation and they're not finding a photo? They can use it to create images customized to specific to their needs. Um, you know, when you have students do projects and things, right? Um, what else? Other student uses. 
Um, students could enter a uh, vocabulary word to get an image, you know, something different than Google images. Um, students, we could use this for writing prompts as well. How, how often do you use an image for writing? And do you want it to be really original? Um, it was actually, I have to credit my daughter. She's a Gen Z. Um, she came up with this idea. She's been using a different um, image generator, Mid Journey, if you've heard of that. And she said, why don't you do this, mom? Have students write a description, put it into chat GPT, get some correction, then put it into um, DALI and see what image it generates from their description. And then um, you give that image to a different student hey, look at this image. Now you write a description of that image and they compare their works. Oh, I know. I like, I like that. I'm going to be trying that like this that. summer. So all kinds of student collaborative writing. Um, these are the limitations a bit. Yeah. Do you want to go over this? Yeah, mm -hmm. have to we have like that. 20 uh, seconds. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. more? No. Not yet, but they'll make it. So, yeah. Lots of you have the first chance to describe the pictures are very white. That's what I want to say. And you can you put in the description? Yes. Uh, Mid-Eastern. Mid yes. Yes. Something interesting. So keep keep asking, keep changing your prompts until you get my It could be. Social issues such as stereotyping, racism, and sexism are inherent. Um, some quality issues, as Christy mentioned, about the way people look uh, in the eyes. A lot of pictures we couldn't use. Um, we're thinking about the artist, right? The artist who has spent a lot of time doing drawing, what's going to happen, what is what is the intellectual property game? This is stuff we have to think about. Um, right now, you can't use it commercially. If you, I, I don't think any commercial product can use AI. And um, we should identify our images as AI. I always believe in citing everything. So I don't care if it says you don't have to cite, I still cite because it doesn't hurt to cite. We don't really have time for yeah. this. So maybe today at dinner, you can reflect on your own if you're eating all by yourself, or if you're joining um, dinner mates, you can discuss um, the power of chat GPT and Dolly, how you're going to use it in your instruction. And um, last sentence is Debbie. yeah, go Debbie, read that last sentence AI with power. Will, read it with, with power. Yeah. AI will be in your class. You have a choice. Either you're in charge or your students. Right. Can we make a plug? Very nice. Thank you. Thank you.